Okay, let's get started. DNC Day 1, President Joseph Robin and Brandon is going to be delivering the keynote address tonight. Uh, maybe I'll be there for that. I don't even know if I will be. I don't know if I'll attend that one, but I could potentially. Okay, now let me tell you, okay, uh, I did not get this level of access that this man has right here. I don't know if they just like set up their camera right here or if they have news stations, but like the DNC should have given me, I'm not kidding when I say this, the DNC should have given me like a CNN style permanent studio. Okay. They f***ed up. This is our chief White House correspondent, Mary Bruce, our chief Washington correspondent, John Carl. Mary, you got caught up in all those storms yesterday, but let's talk <laughs> about the speech tonight with President Biden. Going to be a bittersweet moment for him, but he'll get a lot of love in that hall. Fox News briefly mentioned influencers getting credentials for the DNC. Times I was reading that apparently, uh, in addition to Joe Biden speaking tonight, there are during the week, there are going to be five social media influencers and a bunch of social media influencers have wound up with credentials because uh, as every campaign knows, something like half of Americans get some of their news from social media. Yeah, myself included, except problem is, I think the people that are speaking that they are giving uh, talking points to or like allowed to speak at the DNC, which I never would have done that anyway. But the people that got the, you know, who got one of the talking slots, that chick, Olivia Juliana, who literally was till the very last moment riding with Biden. The Democratic Party is so unimaginably washed in this regard where they just literally, they, they're like, oh, it doesn't matter if you have no organic momentum. It doesn't matter if you have no like real fan base or whatever. As long as a DNC staffer said, we should give you one. But then my boss asked if you still burp into the microphone. If I <laughs> get a one. Yeah, this is trying to reach out to that coveted Zoomer who hasn't said shit about Gaza since November, pushed the Josh Shapiro for Veep campaign, and was a shameless Biden bitter ender until the minute he dropped demo. Like, there is not, there's like eight people that are actually like this in this age range. And what I find really funny about that is that all of those eight people are also at the DNC. So who the f is this outreach for? The other seven people that you didn't give time slots to? Like, this is why it's so ridiculous. Like, the Democratic Party, what are you doing? I'm not saying give me a time slot. I don't want to talk at the goddamn DNC anyway. But having said that, you know, like, out. It's crazy. This person's got zero juice. This person's got zero momentum. This person's got zero emotion, dude. What the f are you guys doing? Who's out here being like, oh, man, I'm such an Olivia Juliana head, you know? They got no aura. Yeah, she was at Gen Z for change and then dropped them because, um, because you know, she wanted, she had higher aspirations to be a Democratic Party staffer. She genuinely thought Texas was going to flip in 2020. It's like, yeah, this is like, let Austin speak, dude. Austin's got more clout and more motion than this person. But um, in any, in any case, in any case, what? You're so jealous? No, dude, I don't want to speak at the dnc what is wrong with you what are you delusional but there's like a million people they could have talked to before this person okay um but good morning when you go to the dnc today so i went to the dnc already earlier today and i mentioned it but i don't think you guys heard it maybe you're just now trickling in but basically i went into the dnc already to get my goddamn credentials and i couldn't even get my goddamn credentials so that's it. Like, uh, that, that, that was my first interaction with the DNC. But later today, uh, later today, I will most likely go. I think the UAW actually might have slotted me in for Sean. I'm not even joking. And I don't know if it's like an actual event or if I have an hour with him. Uh, the UAW might have, uh, might have given me an entire f hour with Sean Fain, I think. I'm trying to figure that out right now. I, dude, I really need, like, I have an invite. Anyway, um... Why do we ever doubt you? Another prediction of yours has come true. Yeah, I briefly talked about this yesterday, but hey, guys, remember when I told you that uh, the Trump supporters are going to be so insane that they're going to start making fun of Tim Waltz for having weak sperm? I mean, I'm sure there's a clip. Someone logged it at the time. Someone must have logged it at the time. As you guys know, I said this immediately. As soon as, a, as, soon as the ticket was Waltz, I said he has an IVF baby. 
He had two children with in vitro fertilization. Trump supporters are going to turn around and say his sperm is weak and start making fun of him for having weak sperm because they're f insane. And guess what? We're there now. But I don't I still don't know the veracity of this. I don't believe it. I don't want to believe it. I'll be honest with you. There is no there is no way there is no way that they're like actively pushing for this. I, I like it's got to be like four or five people max if it's real at all. Because honestly, honestly, like them making fun of JD Vance having weak sperm is one thing that's expected. Okay? But them carrying around like jd vance like a cup that says like jd vance's sperm like i don't think that that's the case there's no shot there's no f shot anyway um but yeah uh, in terms of republicans being abnormal once again ian miles wrong uh the I'm malaysian the bandit who should be arrested and prosecuted for his crimes against the beautiful malaysian state by being an unconditional dick uh dick rider and a loyalist to the state of israel should be actually Tried for treason and maybe executed by the state, but here he is tweeting. Many people are saying AOC looks alluring and is making bedroom eyes at political influencers at the DNC pre-show. Thoughts? Some people just need. Uh, you know, I always say like lobotomy, but honestly, I think maybe euthanization. Okay, like, put, like what? are we doing just looking forward to uh, at the convention this week i mean i love meeting people from all different parts of the country and to have everyone from puerto rico to alabama all in one room learning about each other talking about each other that's my favorite part about this and have the best convention great Thank to meet you. you anyway i haven't even seen the inside of this place yet but but yeah um now uh, the on the other on the other bracket cringe Trump war room, which knows what normal is, is saying this is cringe. Now let's get back to work, shall we? <laughs> wow, dude, that, that's cringe, man. <laughs> that's really cringe, dude. Another right wing freak out, totally normal. That's what our election is about. <laughs> our election is about understanding the importance of this beautiful country of ours in terms of. Yeah, I mean, she did the. She did the the thing that she did last time, which is like unburdened by what has become. You know, she did that type beat. And that's why uh, they're saying she's like cringe and, and weird. But it's like you can be coherent and then turn around and say the most unimaginably weird bull someone has ever heard, which is what Republicans usually do versus someone who just kind of sounds a little off. Okay. Someone who just sounds a little uh, zooted or makes, you know, some sense, but not the most sense when they're off the cuff, teleprompter, off the teleprompter. Uh, I, people would most likely, people would most likely uh, prefer the word salad over the clear and coherent, insane that Republicans say on a daily basis. But yeah, let's get back to it. Let's see what. They're talking about with the uh, with the Joe Biden DNC day one speech. He will, and, and bittersweet quick. is exactly the right word for this. I mean, what imagine just a month ago, Joe Biden thought this was going to be his convention, and now instead tonight he's going to walk out on that stage and pass the torch to Kamala Harris. He will tout the accomplishments that he and Harris have achieved together, make clear he thinks she is the future of the party, and of course he has been praised for his decision to bow out of the race and endorse Harris, even though the party didn't exactly give him a whole lot of choice in the matter. So this is going to be an emotional moment for him. Also a chance for him to cement his legacy. This is likely the largest audience he's going to have as his now 50 plus year career in politics you know, begins to wind down. And the challenge then for Harris is to take that baton, run on her record with Biden, but also make clear what she would do differently and make this her own. And John, you and I have been covering politics for a long time. It's really hard to think of a more consequential summer in American politics. You go back to that debate less than two months ago, June 27th. I mean, we have an entirely different race than we had a month ago. This is uh, a transformed election. This convention is entirely transformed. I mean, a month ago, they had to rip up a script they had effectively been working on, really, George, starting to work on this convention two years ago. Now you have Kamala Harris, uh, who was a vice president standing in the shadows of an unpopular president, now suddenly the undisputed leader of a newly energized Democratic Party. And George, what I would look for here is Harris, as Mary suggested, to subtly but clearly 
distance herself from Joe Biden, and interestingly, also from herself and from the positions she took when she ran in an ill-fated campaign four years ago for the Democratic nomination as somebody at the far left of the party now. She is a transformational figure or wants to be one who can appeal to the left of her party, the center of her party, and also to disaffect, disaffected uh, Republicans unhappy with Donald Trump. Meantime, John, former President Trump seems to be disoriented by the change. His team keeps saying focus on the issues. He keeps focusing on Kamala Harris. Did this motherfucker say far left? He's unhappy with Donald Trump. Meantime, John, former President Trump seems to be disoriented. Informational figure or wants to be one who can appeal from the positions she took when she ran in an ill-fated campaign four years ago for the Democratic nomination as somebody at the far left of the party now. She is a transformational figure or wants to Bro, what are you saying? Yo, people just be saying shit, okay? People just say shit, dude. I swear to God, mainstream media, people just say shit. Like, what are you, what do you mean far left? What do you mean far left? What are we doing here, man? Far left of what? She was never, oh my God, okay. The word communism just like doesn't mean anything to the major media anymore. Yeah. Warning for protesters, Jack Posobiec is present. Please do not engage. She was called the most left senator or something at the time. Probably what he's referring, referring to. Yeah, I mean, she's not. And she wasn't th back then either, by the way. It's crazy, dude. Yeah, so far left is, is wild. Um, call to order Minion Moore, chairman of the Democratic National Convention Committee, Honorable Jamie Harrison. Here, this is the, this is the lineup. That Gay Guy Candle Co. <laughs> Thank you to that Gay Guy Candle Co. for the speakers. Um, remarks and video intro from Brandon Johnson, mayor of Chicago. Uh, confirmatory ceremonial vote, blah, 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 blah. Welcome remarks. Peggy Flan Flanagan, lieutenant governor of uh, Minnesota. Okay, uh, member of the U.S. House of Rep, Illinois, Lauren Underwood, video from Rich Logis, former Donald Trump voter, remarks from Robert Garcia, joint remarks, all this stuff is like whatever, uh, it's not really that interesting, but I mean, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of labor people on this lineup, so that's cool, that's the first day, um, and then remarks, Project 2025, Chapter 1, Introduction, Michigan State uh, Senator, Honorable Gina M. Raimondo, Kathy Hochul, Governor of New York, Sean Fain is going to be speaking, AOC is going to be speaking, and then, that's got to be a mistake, wait, <laughs> AOC and Hillary Clinton back-to-back, -back? what the Am I crazy? That's crazy. That's that's why. Okay. Oh hell no, dude. <laughs> um, and then Jim Clyburn, Jamie Raskin, Jasmine Crockett, Grace Ming, and then joint remarks from uh radical liberal Raphael Warnock. Remarks by Dr. Jill Biden. Introduction by Ashley Biden, and then the Honorable Joe Biden, the Prezo, the Prezi. Okay. Um, Bernard Sanders is going to be speaking on Tuesday night interview with Hill dog. No, this interview is outdated. They're going to be swapping out Hillary Clinton with Austin show Pisaki and Pritzker taking shots. Okay. This is like kind of annoying because I would like to also hang out with the, with the Pritz. Okay. And it's like, he was one of the interview targets for me and they didn't play that game at all. Okay. It's like, oh, do I have to be in the administration? Do I have to be a Pisaki bomb? Do I have to drop a Pisaki bomb to be able to get big prits? Do I have to drop a Pisaki bomb to get the big prits interview? What? Is it because my big boy card has been revoked? Is that what this is? Is that the issue? Fake champagne socialists get your money up more? Yeah. Malort is so f nasty. I know that's the point, but damn. That's Malort. It's not worth it, brother. I don't care. If I get to do it with the prits, I'm down i'll down that shot all right let's see what the fox news people uh, are saying like, about the influencers like a third of people under 30 get their news from tiktok so bring in the tiktokers to make kamala harris look better yeah and you know what this i should say is something that this administration has been doing for a while. I mean, they had a briefing at the White House with social media influencers. You recall at NATO, they invited like 20 or so right. to come in and cover the, the NATO summit. Um, I <laughs> don't know how that went over or if people watched it. On <laughs> I mean, that's dumb, bro. I'm sorry. 
but that is hilarious okay yeah let's get the f influencers at the goddamn nato summit like what dude we're really figuring out exactly what these kids like you know what i mean hey if you're under the age of 35 you know what you're f primed about dude nato okay it's like bro there is like eight american citizens that vote uh, at, like outside of the dmv specifically northern virginia who the f is voting for nato there is no nato voters man that's not a thing god damn i'm losing my mind at how stupid the democrats can sometimes be this is like old democratic party sh they're shedding a lot of this stuff in my opinion TikTok, but they are increasingly aware that that's where people get their information and they're trying to reach those voters uh and some polling i i saw a couple days ago shows that harris is doing well with tiktokers so maybe it's working guys the tiktokers will do some talking thank you very much jackie yeah. What's funny is that you don't make Harris look better. It's conservatives who makes themselves look worse. Yeah. Single issue voters who's concerned about energy stability in Germany. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. I was really worried about making sure that Finland joins NATO, actually. Um, and I will be writing in Biden because he got Finland into NATO. Um, yeah, that's the situation. That's DNC day one. one. Far left figurehead Kamala Harris is transforming the f party. Didn't realize you were cosplaying to the DNC. What, what do you mean cosplaying? Can appeal to the left of her party, the center of her party, and also to disaffect, disaffected uh, Republicans unhappy with Donald Trump. Meantime, John, former President Trump seems to be disoriented by the change. His team keeps saying focus on the issues. He keeps focusing on Kamala Harris. Yeah, and, and he really is, has been thrown off his game. He, you've heard him complain privately and publicly uh, about the fact that Biden was swapped out. They were prepared to run against Biden. Uh, Republicans have a clear strategy. That is, focus on the issues. As you heard Rick say, uh, you have uh, Republicans. Trump has an advantage on crime, on the border, on the economy. Uh, but he is not focusing on the issues. His is all about attack, attack, attack personally attack and attack some more okay. it's pretty funny trump will be like we're doing a policy on the economy speech okay we're doing an economic policy speech and then like 90 percent of the speech is being like every salvadoran is a rape and venezuelans are are doing new they're inventing new versions of white women and also um kamala harris is is also participating in this secretly uh they want the american blood pool to look less white and it's like what what happened like the, where's the f economic policy he just gives a brief moment he just does like one f take on it where he'll be like yeah i'm gonna slash prices by half won't tell you how he's gonna do it and just moves on to the high notes to the things that he wants to talk about he's like Bacon is four times the price. Why? Guatemalans, they're eating all the bacon, folks. No more supply and demand, believe me. No more supply of bacon. All the Guatemalans, they ate the bacon, folks. This is why I will stop the Guatemalan migration. Everything. Everything is just tied back. Okay, Don, thanks very much. We're going to, of course, have team coverage of the Democratic National Convention all week long. For more on what to expect tonight and in the days ahead in Chicago, Ed O'Keefe joins us. Ed, as I listed off the speakers, it occurs to me a contrast with the Republicans who did not have many formers on their stage. There were no signs of the Bush family in Milwaukee. Good to see you. Welcome to Chicago. Uh, tonight, uh, as we said, is all about President Biden. They're going to give him a big tribute, focus on his decades-long career, and then they're going to turn their attention to the future with Harris at the top of the ticket. In a final push before the convention, Vice President Harris spent Sunday rolling through the battleground state of Pennsylvania, alongside running mate Minnesota Governor Tim Walls. They stopped by a campaign office. We're, uh, we're doing it. Yes, because Hillary Clinton is exactly everyone wants to hear from. Yeah, dude, I don't really understand what, like, the motivation is for a lot of this stuff. I just, I don't get it. Like, who the f like, damn, dude, you know what would hit right now? A Hillary Clinton speech. There's just never been a moment in my life where I felt that. And I don't think there's any human being that actually feels that way either. I'll, I'm, I'm actually, like, I'll say it. I don't think that's a real thing that people want, okay? Yeah. Oh, wow. And rallied supporters in a wide variety of places while fielding questions about her campaign. I very much consider us the underdog. We have a lot of work to do to earn the vote of the American people. She also took swipes at former President Donald Trump. Anybody 
who is about beating down other people is a coward. It comes after Trump also campaigned in Pennsylvania over the weekend and tried to make his case on the economy. We will make America affordable again. But he once again veered into personal attacks on Harris's intelligence and appearance. I am much better looking than her. I think I'm much better looking. I mean, what? What? What a wild thing to say, man. He's just, he's just going crazy mode. I am much better looking than her. I am. Everyone knows it. Believe me, I'm so much better looking. Much better. I'm a better looking person than Kamala. Rifts like that have Trump allies concerned about whether he can stay on message as Harris has made gains, most notably among likely women voters in a new CBS News poll. If you have a policy debate for president, he wins. Donald Trump, the, provo uh, the provocateur, the, uh, the showman, may not win this election. Trump and Harris are both now racing to define what her administration would look like, as our new poll also finds more than a third of registered voters say they don't know what she stands for. She'll use this week in Chicago to try to answer those questions. As allies say, momentum is in her favor. You've seen the level of excitement and energy rising and rising, and it frankly hasn't crested yet. That excitement has thousands descending on Chicago this week. Security is tight as law enforcement prepares for large protests opposing the war in Gaza. Chicago Mayor Brandon Johnson, who will speak at the convention tonight, says his city is ready. Protecting this city is my top priority, and I will continue to do that. Protests started last night with about 500 people marching down Michigan Avenue. The police were there on foot and bicycle, making sure everybody was all right. More protests with larger numbers are expected in the coming days. A big one coming today. The coalition to march on the DNC starts around midday here, Tony around the United Center. You know, Ed, let's go back to Vice President Kamala Harris, because when you're in that job, you get a plane and you get a mansion in Washington, D.C., yeah. but there are no promises about your political future. She's going to have to, starting tonight, go out there and get it. Yeah, What absolutely. she need to do? Well, you know, one of the most interesting findings in our poll, about 36% of voters say they don't necessarily... I'm a big fan, but does it feel like a which side are you on moment for going to the DNC and participating in it versus staying outside with the protesters? I know you say being inside you'll function as a protester, but will you really ask for an arms embargo to the face of politicians? Because that seems like the only thing that wouldn't be wouldn't be endorsing the Dems right now. What are you talking about, dude? <laughs> We're gonna. I I think I will. I think I'm gonna. <laughs> he kind of ate you up. Not gonna lie. No, you're right. He did. Uh, my my loyalty. My loyalty is with the Dems, baby. You already know. Hey, listen. I got the hat to prove it. Okay. Hey, man, I don't know if you know this. I don't know if you know this. Hey, lady. Sorry. Okay. I'm saying uh, man is in like, you know, listen, lady. Okay. I'm a goddamn member of the media. Okay. The is wrong with you. <laughs> My job is to cover the news and give you commentary. Okay. Shut the up jesus christ dude oh yeah yeah um do you think that they're gonna ignore palestine they gave so here's some good things and some bad things about this okay one uncommitted dnc will host ever first ever panel on palestinian human rights panelists uncommitted co-lead Leila el abed a surgeon who served in gaza party organizer with family killed in gaza by israeli forces minnesota attorney general keith ellison uh former rep andy levin Arab American Institute President Jim Zogby, okay? And it, this is, like, pretty solid, pretty huge, right? That's, like, a pretty big deal. But also, simultaneously, on the other side, you got the DNC uh, coming out with a statement against, like, sexual violence that Hamas committed, which is, like, so nutty when you think about what's going on in Israel right now. Pretty incredible, though totally believable, that the final DNC platform is a one-sided condemnation of sexual violence, and it's aimed at Hamas, even as the Knesset engages in a full-throated debate as to whether acknowledge the rape of Palestinian detainees is okay or not. Their entire platform on the Israel sh is just, like, so incredibly one-sided. I know TikTok is sure the day doesn't matter, but there's a really interesting shift on leftist TikTok of other minorities getting increasingly frustrated by Palestinian pro-Palestinian creators as... 
asking marginalized groups in America to sideline their oppression and rights by committing to not voting. Um, no, you are being increasingly annoying, and the shift is is just incredibly annoying. Americans are just so selfish and don't give a shit about anything else other than themselves. Ain't nobody's actually having a conversation like that. Okay, Palestinian rights are human rights. Palestinian rights are the same as as black liberation. Palestinian liberation is the same as black liberation in the United States of America. Palestinian emancipation is uh, is directed towards an an entire government that literally trains the American police departments. Okay, there is a direct through line. I don't care. Like it's just so stupid. I'm sick and tired of having this conversation with people who are just idiotic. Okay. This is a conversation that we're having with people who are just too stupid to like read into it a little bit. I don't care. TikTok, okay? Jesus Christ. I necessarily know what she stands for, what she would do as president. That's a higher percentage than Donald Trump. So she's got to spend time this week, the whole party does, explaining again who she is, what she's about, what she would do. The poll also found, interestingly, the reason she's starting to close the gap, those younger voters and voters of color are now starting to show up in numbers that suggest they can close the gap. So she's got to keep focused on them and what they're interested about, which is why you're hearing so much this week about the future. What will you do for you? What would this change in the country mean for you as you get older? You see a lot of focus on that as well. As soon as that Rose All girl called black people colonizers, you lost me. I'm going to lose my mind. Don't necessarily know her life story. Don't necessarily know the work she's been doing the last few years or what she would want to do. That's what this week's got to be about because it's a four-day ad, essentially, yeah. for her with the potential for a lot of news to be made as well. Yeah, she's going to define herself, not let Republicans exactly. do the defining for her. Yep. Ed, thank you very much. Uh, some of the thousands of delegates say they are remaining uncommitted as a protest over U.S. support for Israel. CNN's Donny O'Sullivan is here with me. Uh, Donny, you've been speaking to some of these My delegates. Goat. I was talking to Congressman Jackson about this. My freaking goat, Donny O'Sullivan, baby. Um, I think it's very selfish of you. Okay, dude. Mm. Earlier on in this program, whether or not it's going to, uh, you know, present a major disruption. A lot of people don't know the difference between having morals and only having an instrumental relationship with morality. Yeah. They should have an instrumental relationship with the top of the hour ad break, which is my instrument of oppression, my mechanism of oppression upon those who are unsubscribed. Because at the top of the hour, there's a three minute ad break. And if you no longer want to see those ads, you are going to get cooked. You're going to see it. If you no longer want to see those ads, you need to subscribe or else you are going to see three minutes of ads. People that personally think that like the pro-Palestinian movement overall are anti-black or some shit. And that's why you're... Uh, allegiances with the pro-Palestinian movement are on shaky grounds for the record. Okay. If, if people feel that way, then, you know, they just don't, they're, they're weak. Okay. They're thin skinned, they're weak and they don't have like any coherent, consistent worldview. It has nothing to do. It literally has nothing to do with that at all. It has nothing to do with your own personal opinions, your own personal feelings. Okay. And everything to do with advocating for justice, advocating for emancipation, okay? Hassan, can you please interview the RFK Jr. supporters protesting outside the DNC? Yes, I will be uh, if I have the sh chance. One of them came up to me in an RNC, or in an RFK Jr. fit, by the way, and dabbed me up and was like, Hassan! Woo! Oh, it was that guy. This is the guy, I think. This is literally the guy. Content, baby. Content. You can't possibly believe that there aren't people in there working on behalf of a Republican victory. I know you can't discuss this because you couldn't possibly tell me exactly how a right wing infiltrator would act in that space. In what space? In the pro Palestinian camp? Is that what you're saying? You think there's like right wing inf infiltrators? There's right wing, right wing infiltrators in every space. I mean, here, look at this. Heads up, neo-Nazi ally and right wing troll Jack Posobiec is trying to interview DNC protesters undercover outside the United Center in Chicago wearing a cafe over his face. Don't speak to him. There you go. Yeah, you asked. Here are the infiltrators. The infiltrators don't even have to be right wing. Let's not pretend the only right that unconditionally support Israel. No, I think that Chatter was trying to make an argument that like... Chatter was trying to make an argument that like they are there are uh, right wing infiltrators in the pro Palestinian space, specifically being like, don't vote for the Democrats. It's like I think people can make up their own 
minds on this issue. There are a lot of people who also personally think voting for Trump would be helpful for the Palestinians. I don't believe that, obviously. That's something that I've routinely criticized. I think it's ridiculous. Having said that, however, having said that, however, there are people who do believe that. Okay, so just remind yourself of that reality. Democrats here in Chicago, right. what are you hearing? I got a pee. Hey, Jim, yeah, I mean, there are just going to be probably tens of thousands uh, of protesters expected outside the arena. Uh, but when it comes to here on the convention floor, I mean, obviously the Democrats want to tell a story of remarkable unity and, and the party getting behind Harris. Uh, but for pro-Palestinian activists and demonstrators, uh, they also want to bring that point up here on the convention floor and they want answers uh, from Harris on Gaza. And we spoke to some of them yesterday. We've got 30 uncommitted delegates that are representing over 740,000 uncommitted voters nationwide who voted uncommitted as a pro-peace, anti-war vote in the Democratic primary. This is a meeting of uncommitted Democratic delegates here in Chicago on the eve of the Democratic National Convention. But it's not sustainable for our own government to fund the mass killing of civilians. Folks become delegates at their state party and then they come to the National Convention and they're either committed to the candidate, to one of the candidates, or not. In our case, we're not committed because we haven't heard what we've wanted to hear. We're looking for a ceasefire. We're looking for a strong commitment on a ceasefire. We're looking for an arms embargo uh, for us to stop sending weapons that are contributing to the genocide there. I represent uh, some of the over 101,000 voters in Michigan who voted uncommitted as a pro-peace, anti-war vote. Nobody wants to see Trump in November. We are a very anti-fascist movement. We are actually doing what we can to save the Democratic Party by saying, listen, VP Harris, there is a key base of over 730,000 anti-war voters who are telling you that we want to see you turn the page on Gaza policy and save Palestinian lives. What do you want to hear from Harris in Chicago this week? I want to hear from Vice President Harris how it is that she's going to turn a new page on Gaza policy from the destructive and disastrous policy of the last 10 months to one that saves lives. You got to meet Harris briefly yes. in Michigan. We wanted to be able to speak to her directly. And the fact that Michigan voters would want to support her in the November election, but we can't do that right now while our family members, our friends, our loved ones are being killed with U.S. funded bombs. I told her that we need a policy shift that will save lives in Gaza. My, my community is telling me that they're losing tens and hundreds of their family members. And she said it's horrific. She's been incredibly empathetic. I do have to say that more. We have seen more empathy and compassion from Vice President Harris, but that is not enough. Palestinian children can't. Eat oh, my God, Asana, you forgot Kaya. Shit. I was supposed to bring her here. Words. Is there more hope in this movement right now with Harris at the top of the ticket than there was when Biden was there? I think that in general, we would all say we're cautiously optimistic. There is a little bit more wiggle room, we feel like, with Vice President Harris. We've already seen her change the rhetoric a little bit, but words are not enough. And Jim, you hear that cautious optimism there. I will say one of the delegates also told me that. Like, I'm not kidding when I say this. The DNC should have given me a lot like this. Okay. The difference it's in bullshit. the engagement between when Biden was on top of the ticket versus when Harris it was night and day in terms of how the campaign is engaging uh, with these activists. Um, also, a lot of folks, a lot of Democrats saying to people like this, well, you know, if you don't vote for what's your take on leftist channels who are criticizing uncommitted voters for even talking to Harris? I don't care. Yeah, they're silly. Okay, it's ridiculous. There is a f election going on. Okay, there is a f election happening. Obviously, it is a pressure point. It quite literally is the smart thing to do. Wait, what did you say? 9 11 guy? Um, you do understand, I'm, I literally have a press pass. Like, I have a badge given to me by the DNC. They just didn't give me a slot, like a permanent space that I can stream out of. That's it. I don't know why people are, are like this. I'm using the hotel internet. It's pretty simple to extract concessions. You need people to talk to Harris? Yeah. My girlfriend cuts Prisker's hair and his wives. I can link you. Have your team DM me. I don't have a team, man. This is me. How does it feel to have that DNC badge? Seems exciting. It... It's fine. I saw you mention in a random video about skateboarding pants as a grifter because you wore $1,000 pants. When did I wear $1,000 pants? Liberals are trying to cope that the pro-Palestinian protests are not their own potential voters trying to put pressure on a key issue. Yeah. You might help Trump and that's I'm not... I'm surprised they didn't give you a slot. No, not like a speaking slot, but like a permanent space inside of the DNC where I can stream. 
going to be good for Arab Americans or for Gaza and for this cause, <laughs> your cause. Um, and those folks say that's that's not our issue. That is for the Harris campaign to answer those questions and to, to change their position. And I hate to ask you an, an impossible uh, question to answer, but I'll ask it anyway. Which Thank is, you, Jim. Yeah, Make what, my life yeah, easy. Thanks for that. What are the expectations that things will remain peaceful, that things won't get out of control? Are you getting any sense of that from these activists you're talking to? I mean, every all the activists that we've spoken to very much say they want things to remain peaceful. They want their voices to be heard. They want to remain peaceful. Uh, but of course, like this, uh, like any demonstration, right. particularly on this issue, particularly also with the idea of, of potentially counter protests. And also there could be agitators uh, in these crowds outside the next few days. We'll be outside as will our colleagues be. Uh, but yes, hope they are hoping, as everybody here is, that things remain peaceful. Yeah, you have to assume that outside agitators are going to try to infiltrate Absolutely. some of these yeah. demonstrations, try to see what kind of trouble they can stir up. All right, Donio Sullivan, thank you very thank you. much. Really appreciate it. All right, as the Democrats work to showcase party unity inside the convention hall, not everyone is on board with Kamala Harris outside on the streets of Chicago. Uh, we've I've been showing this to you. Tens of thousands of pro-Palestinian protesters are descending on the city to show their discontent with the Biden administration's handling of the Israel-Hamas war. It's a familiar challenge for the vice president, who's become pretty well versed in handling the hecklers. I'm here because we believe in democracy. Everyone's voice matters, but I am speaking now. You know what? If you want Donald Trump to win, then say that, otherwise I'm speaking. Inside the convention hall, though, another small crack in democratic unity with 36 uncommitted delegates on that floor. They represent hundreds of, uh, hundreds of- This is so funny. Obsessed with the DNC rendering of the creator platform, uh, Donny uh, Donny sent me the not this rendering, but like the actual photo of the platform earlier this morning. He's like, I think they're gonna put the creators there. <laughs> they got the Unreal Engine render. March hasn't even begun, and the media is already working overtime to downplay the attendance. I mean, it it hasn't begun yet. It's like filling in. The pile of unclaimed signs of the pro-Palestine protest march on the DNC an hour after it began. Organizers say they were hoping for 30 to 40K. The crowd is maybe one-tenth of that size. Crowd coverings less than half of this three softball, uh, softball sized field size uh, park. Only if you brought Kai to stop him. I know. I f***ed it up. Is it only for today, this particular protest? I think there's like different demonstrations throughout the week. But this is like supposed to be the first day of the protests. Citizens of American voters and Democrats as well. We're now learning that three Democratic senators who are running for re-election in competitive states will not attend this convention. You see them there on your screen. Let's discuss this all and more with CNN political commentators Kate Bedingfield and Scott Jennings. Uh, Kate, I, I was just talking to Gary Peters a second ago and I asked him about what um, what he thinks that the protesters need to understand about what Harris can and cannot do. And the very first thing he said was that we need to get to a ceasefire deal. There is a little bit of choreography about this particular moment where maybe they're on the cusp of a ceasefire deal. Maybe she can't say a whole lot more about this issue at what risk happened? of jeopardizing that. But you've got thousands of protesters on the streets wanting uh. to hear more. Well, that's often true in foreign affairs and national security. There are things going on that you can't necessarily talk about publicly. Um, but I actually, I think on this, she's been quite public about where she hopes to get to. She's been very vocal that she wants to see a ceasefire now, that she wants to see hostages released. She has spent a lot of time making very clear that that's what she, President Biden, and the administration are pushing for. I think, look... The Democratic Party is a big party. It's a big tent. People are going to speak up and be heard. That's all right. I think you've heard her handle it uh, both with strength, as I would argue. Uh, at this point, do you think there's any chance that Kamala will take a more aggressive stance against Israel? I don't know. I don't know at all. And um, like I said, there's some good things. There's some good things uh, in terms of like having the uncommitted vote, uh, vote platform like have speaking, say, uh, speaking space. Um, overall though, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, so here, I mean, it's not likely. It's not very likely. The likelihood is not high. Um, there is also another aspect of this that we're going to be talking about after this part of the coverage is done because, um, uh, because there's also the, the ongoing ceasefire negotiations and there's obviously a lot of misinformation surrounding that.
the clip that you showed uh, before we started talking demonstrates, but also you've seen her really be clear that she ultimately shares their goal. And at the end of the day, if you are somebody who's protesting the DNC because you're frustrated about where things stand. And there has been a lot of reporting now about what the CNN person said, by the way, Kamala cannot slash will not say anything more because of the ceasefire negotiations. Yeah, I think that you can't live stream inside the DNC. Wait, what? Where did you get that idea from? You? No, I never said that. Got in Israel. Donald Trump as president, who has said that we need to go into Gaza and finish the job, is not a viable option for you. And so I would really say to these protesters, look at what Kamala Harris is trying to do to get to a ceasefire. Phonics, don't ever say not to be an audio in order. You're the biggest audio pervert in the chat. No, we don't have lavalier mics. Or we do, actually. We don't. Uh, we have lavalier mics, dude. What are you? Bro, this guy, bro. Oh, my God, bro. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. We have love mics. Okay, we do. Uh, and listen to what she has to say, because she has been very, very vocal about this. When you say shares their goal, whose goal exactly? Because some of these people on the street, I can assure you, do not have goals that you want inside some the tent of the Democratic Party. I agree with that. In fact, some I would do. say, I would say most of them said, don't. Uh, some do, and some have said incredibly anti-Semitic things, which she has called out. Some oh, have my God, shut up. Shut up. Oh, God, these guys are such freaks. Um, have defaced property, uh, which you remember she, I think the day after the property was defaced at Union Station, she put out a really forceful statement about it. Absolutely. But broadly speaking, the cohort of people who want to see a ceasefire uh, in Israel and Gaza, she shares that goal. Oh, my God. Any chance you'll meet up with AOC this week? Yes. To those who are rightfully disillusioned by the DNC, take part in the grassroots movement. Just do something, anything. It's our responsibility. Yeah. You look very demure, very mindful. Thank you. I try to be as mindful and as demure as I possibly can every day. It's such a cowardly way to cover They're this shit to be like, wow. Um, Bob shall report reveals shocking information about anti-Israel protesters at DNC from Fox News. <laughs> Um, there's been a lot of anti-Semitic statements coming from the protest areas. There's been a lot of anti-Semitic statements. What is this? Charlie Kirk? Republican Secretary I, I of State in the state of Georgia. Day. What's your name? You said Parker? My name's Parker. We have a yeah. Republican governor and Republican Secretary I, of State I, in Georgia that approved our elections, and Donald Trump said that wasn't constitutional. Right, relax. Donald Can Trump tried to undermine your, our dude, constitution. You're, you're I just walked in. I'm here to just learn. I'm hey, here to you're, just you're an anti-patriotic, anti-constitutional person crashing our party so because you, you tried question. to stop our democracy. Question. I got one question. Donald Trump called the Can Secretary of State question. of Georgia. Nothing gets me... Nothing gets me as libbed up as like seeing one of these guys, seeing like these incredibly nerdy, like lanyard wearing Democratic Party operative influencers get up in the face of a Republican commentator. It gets me so f libbed up. I despise them when they're talking about like, um, Palestine is not an important issue. Let's not talk about that. But God damn, do they pop off on the likes of Charlie Kirk and shit. It just, it does... If there's anything that unites the Democratic Party or unites the progressive left in general with um, with with uh, the like the entirety of the left umbrella in this country, it is just like being in the presence of a right winger for three and a half seconds. OK, I can't stand some of these. I don't know about this dude. I don't know him at all. But I can't stand some of these motherfuckers when they're talking about like, you know, Cory Bush getting owned or whatever. And it's like, you're gross. Um, but the moment that they just chirp at a person like Charlie Kirk is awesome. To Georgia and told him to find him some votes. What is a woman? Oh my God. That is so fucking weird, y'all. Maybe you should meet one. <laughs> he said, what is a woman? <laughs> we need into the abortion ban. Like, what is oh, because you're with the guys who are with the vasectomy. You're on the vasectomy side of it. I'm not fucking anybody currently. So, like, I don't understand. Do you understand? They, they, will, they will cut this if there's, with this language. Uh, I do. You have fucked, Jack. All right. You. Well, one of the things that Freak. Um, yeah, I did see the unhinged uh, Israel post. I did. Um, are we ready to let it rip? But I just got to disconnect this. Uh, I got to take the thing off, right? Okay.